The authors of the document reveal a 2008 memo from the head of the Foreign Ministry's Eastern Policy Department, Yaroslav Bratkevich, regarding Poland's policy toward Russia and Ukraine. Radoslav Sikorsky headed the ministry at the time. The memo assessed that Russia had no imperial ambitions. The objective possibilities of Russia's expansion in the political and economic, let alone military sense, are quite limited. And on this conviction, Prime Minister Donald Tusk and Foreign Ministry Chief Radoslav Sikorsky built a policy of reset towards Russia. Paradoxically, this was in complete contradiction to the knowledge the Polish government had at the time, especially since they read out a secret cipher from the Polish embassy in Moscow on March 21, 2008. In it, diplomats informed that Russia was ready to attack Ukraine. The prelude to the invasion was to be the Crimean Peninsula. To my surprise, I learned that today's episode of the Reset series discussed a declassified cipher text of my authorship from 2008. That is from the time when I worked in the political department of of the Polish embassy in Moscow. In that cipher, I report on the words of a high-ranking speaker from the Russian foreign ministry who informed of Russian plans to chop Ukraine in two and that the operation would begin with Crimea. Withholding this information gave Russia time and demobilized NATO allies. If Donald Tusk and Radoslav Sikorsky had acted differently, it is safe to say that there would be no war in Ukraine today. In the fourth episode of the Reset series, Editor Rahoń and Professor Tsenskevich also showed a letter from President Lech Kaczynski to the Prime Minister of Greece, dated March 26, 2008. The correspondence was forwarded to the Foreign Ministry. In the document, the President stressed that among the the most important issues to be discussed at the NATO summit will certainly be the open-door policy for Ukraine and Georgia. In connection with the participation of the President of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Lech Kaczynski, in the NATO summit in Bucharest on April 2nd to 4th, 2008, I transmit and closed a letter from the President of Poland to the heads of state and government of NATO member countries, with a polite request that the letter be delivered urgently to the addresses through diplomatic channels before April 1st of this year. President Kaczynski was anxious for the letter to reach the heads of state before the NATO summit in Bucharest. However, However, this did not happen. This document is supposed to lie in our armory closet until Monday and await further instructions. Proving some obstruction, such an outright obstruction, is difficult to prove. And I think we are showing a smoking gun on this issue. That's what is in this episode. There is no doubt in my mind that what Radosław Sikorski did with President Lech Kaczynski's letter is something that may verge on diplomatic treason. And perhaps it would have to be considered through the prism of a possible violation of the Constitution. In 2008, during the North Atlantic Treaty Summit, the open-door NATO policy for Ukraine and Georgia was represented by U.S. President George Bush and Polish President Lech Kaczyński. President Lech Kaczyński, President Lech Kaczyński was in favor of a clear path for Ukraine and Georgia to join NATO, while the Polish government, headed by Tusk, although formally they support this position in words, considered Ukraine as a collapsed nation. The NATO summit conclusions managed to include a paragraph about the alliance's open door for Ukraine and Georgia. This was the result of President Lech Kaczynski's personal efforts. However, the adoption of a timetable for the accession of these countries to NATO failed. Four months after the NATO summit in Bucharest, Russia launched an armed invasion of Georgia, preceded by a series of provocations in South Ossetia and Abkhazia. And in 2014, Kremlin-controlled green men seized Ukraine's Crimea. President, uh, Lech Kaczynski, miał... President Lech Kaczynski had an incredible intuition, because it actually happened what he said later on the square in Tbilisi, when the Russian aggression against Georgia began. First Georgia, then Ukraine, then the Baltics, and then maybe us. So he was aware of the fact that Ukraine and Georgia should have been offered then, not membership right away maybe, but this membership plan. The upcoming NATO summit in Vilnius is expected to address topics that were abandoned 15 years ago at the Bucharest summit, among other things by the misguided policies of the Polish government. These are primarily about a certain range of security guarantees expected by Ukrainians fighting the Russian invaders.